Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to cut out your first Hello World. So now that you have your lead machine up and running, it's time to go ahead and cut out a cool project. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is open up our Open Builds G Code Generator. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up our browser, go to openbuilds.com. From there, click Software and open up your CAM G Code Generator. Okay, we're going to start with the new workspace. So from here, we need to go into settings, make sure that our machine parameters are correct. So we'll go ahead and select settings. Make sure you select the default for OpenBuild's Lead Machine 1010. We're using the Spark Concepts X Pro. And the tool we are using, of course, is our spindle. So go ahead and select that. Moving on down, just go ahead and save. Go back to the workspace tab. From there, select open drawing and you'll see open hello world example. That's exactly what we want. So go ahead and select that. You'll see over here that it's calculating the tool paths and generating the G code for this design. Once that's complete, transfer your G code to the open builds control software. Once it uploads, you'll see the 3D view of the design. And let's go ahead and set up our machine for this cutout. So the first thing we want to do, if you've already been operating a machine, is go ahead and home the machine if you have micro limit switches. If not, you're going to have to find your zero point. So we'll go over that a little bit later in the video, but first we're gonna go ahead and home all. Okay, so since we ran the homing cycle, let's go ahead and move forward to setting up our router as well as positioning our piece of material for this cutout. Okay, so what I have here is a collet reducer to reduce this down to an eighth inch bit. And to the side of that, you'll see my bit is double flute. And next to that, I have my spanner wrench that came with the DeWalt router. So what we want to do is go ahead and set up our reducer. These are available to purchase at the Open Builds parts store. Definitely recommend it. It's a really cool way to adapt this down to an eighth inch bit. So you can get really fine cuts and really show that detail in your projects. Really nice addition right here. So let's go ahead and insert our bit first. So you see on the bottom portion here, it's like a flexible portion of the reducer here, and that's going to clamp down into our collet of the router. So what I like to do first is insert the bit. I stick it in about halfway from there. Let's go ahead and set that down. You'll see a button here on the left side of your router. This is going to lock your collet into place so you can loosen or tighten it. As you can see, I have mine already pre-loosened. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and insert our reducer. Now you want the reducer all the way into the collet of the router. From there, go ahead and tighten down the collet. And like I said, this button here is going to lock this into place. And from there, I'm going to snug this into the router. So we're going to turn counterclockwise until we get a nice snug feel on that collet. Now you don't want to over tighten this. You just want a nice tight lock. That's perfect. And that's how you install your bit with your reducer. So now let's move forward to the material that we're going to be cutting. So what I have here is a scrap piece of wood that I've cut out to seven inches by seven inches. It's a quarter inch thick. I'm going to mount this to my spoiler board with double-sided tape. This works really well. It's a nice sturdy mount. And I also have my measuring tape here with a permanent marker. I'm just gonna mark this into the MDF to make sure that this piece of material is square that way our project is completely even with our material so to get started let's go ahead and measure out two inches from the front of the machine on both ends and we'll go ahead and mark that with our permanent marker and as you can see I just put a spot on each one you don't have to get carried away with it we just need reference to make sure that this material is square. So from there, I'm just going to align it with my marks here to make sure that the 
material is square. As far as placement goes, it doesn't matter as long as you're placing the material anywhere in the workspace, the parameters of your machine, that works just fine. The most important thing is that you're starting your project start position at the front left position of the material. And this is to ensure that your project stays within the parameters of your material. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is take out four pieces of my double-sided tape and tape each corner of the material. That way I have a secure mount once I flip this over and mount it to the MDF. Okay, so once you have the tape in place, simply strip off the excess. Okay, so now that we have the tape in place, let's go ahead and flip this around and let's mount it in line with our two points of reference to ensure this is square. What I like to do is press on all four corners. You want to make sure that this is mounted sturdy to your spoiler board. Okay, that's perfect. So now let's go ahead and move forward to setting up our project start point. Okay, so since I'm currently at 10 millimeter increments here, I'm going to go ahead and move my x-axis to the right, which is a positive movement. I'm going to bring this all the way over to the material. And also with the y, positive movement, we're moving it back towards our controller. And last, of course, is our z-axis. So bumping this down to one millimeter increments, a negative movement's gonna delve down into the material. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump that down. So as you can see here, my bit is close to the material, but we need to move that down slightly. So what I use is a little piece of paper to find that position. So bringing the paper in, I'm gonna slide it underneath the bit here. And once my bit snags onto the paper, I'll know that I'm close enough to the material for this job. So let's go ahead and move down our Z axis. I'm gonna bump this down to 0.1 millimeters. And I'm gonna move this down slightly until I find my position. So you see I still have movement, so let's go ahead and move that down slightly. Okay, so now that we've snagged onto the bit here, as you can see my paper is on the bit. What we need to do now, since we found our zero position, as you can see, I'm approximately 10 millimeters in on both X and Y, and my Z axis is on the top of the material. So that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and move our system up after we set our zero point. So as you can see over here, we have X, Y, and Z set zero. So go ahead and set the zero. You should see your DROs, your digital readouts, indicate zero for each axis. So that looks good. So we also have a go to zero option here. So if we move the machine around anywhere into the quadrants, we can always go back to our zero point as long as we have set that point. And this is very important for any type of manufacturing. You wanna make sure that you always set your zero point before you start any job. So let's go ahead and move our z-axis up. It's going to bump us up to one millimeter increments here. That way we can pull our paper out. And I'm also going to show you what it looks like when you zero out your machine. So you can see I'm out of the zero point that we set up. I'm going to go ahead and pull my piece of paper. And let's go back to the zero point. So as you can see now, our machine is back to the zero point, which is the start of our position for this job. So now that we have our zero point set up, let's go ahead and move on to the settings that we need to establish on our router. Okay, taking notice to our dial here on the router, we wanna set this at a 3.5 setting. So you'll see here that I'm in between three and four. And the reason for doing this, this is the soft wood. 3.5 is a perfect setting for this job. Now, when you get into harder materials, you can increase and decrease. And there are resources on the forum that you can research for each type of material, which is really convenient. So make sure to check out the forum 
for additional information. So 3.5 is approximately 12,000 RPMs, and that works perfect to give you a nice cut for this job. So go ahead and set your router to 3.5, and from there, let's go ahead and turn on our router. Okay, now that we have everything in position and we have our zero point established, our router is turned on at the proper setting. Before we start this job, we want to make sure if anything goes wrong, we power down our machine. This is very important. Safety first, guys. In addition to that, what I like to use to clean up the mess is a little shop vac. And from there, I'll keep the hose near my material to suck up any debris. So it's definitely a, a good idea to go ahead and pull out your shop vac before you go ahead and manufacture your job. So without further ado, let's go ahead and run this job. Okay, now that the job's complete, let's go ahead and move our Y-axis back, as well as our Z-axis up slightly. So, bumping it to one millimeter increments here, I'm just gonna rise on the Z-axis. And for the Y-axis, I'm gonna bump that back 10 millimeters, just to get it out of our workspace. And as you can see, the cut turned out great. We have an outside cut here for the world. Our pocket here for the open build symbol, and the hello is an inside cut. That turned out great, guys. Great job. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Dream it, build it, share it, and we'll see you on future videos.